for now. And now we go live to Parliament, where the Land Bank and National Treasury are briefing the Standing Committee on Appropriations regarding financial issues facing the bank. Let's go there live. Uh, the commercial banks and institutional investors. Now, uh, this organization obviously gets rated in terms of its credit rating and um, you know, and tries as much as it can, although not uh, uh, regulated by the Reserve Bank, functions very much uh, uh, like the bank. And um, when it's rated well and it is funded, things do look good. But when uh, Moody's started to flag some of the concerns um, affecting the bank and the industry, um, I'm trying to move over to slide 15. The bank was uh, uh, um, placed on review uh, uh, with a negative outlook. There was a weakening uh, credit profile for the bank. Um, the willingness uh, of the state to support where the need came. Um, the, the elevated risk of non-performing loans was flagged by Moody's. The declining capital buffers and uh, some uh, covenants that were weak and resulting in the organization not being able to fulfill its mandate. Um, you know, where some of the issues raised by Moody's, the environmental risks that I've just shared earlier um, um, did uh, concern, concern Moody's. And then um, the land reform and any downward risk that um, could impact the organization. Now, when these issues started being flagged by Moody's, obviously the land bank and treasury got into a room and started debating these matters. Uh, but in January, the last quarter of the previous financial year we've just concluded, uh, Moody's did downgrade the land bank. In its global rating, it was uh, put um, uh, just below investment grade, what they refer to as, as junk status, credit scale, uh, they are still okay. It was high grade. So it means that uh, funders could still fund uh, uh, the bank at favor favorable rates to the bank at least. But in the Moody's uh, assessment, um, they did allude to the very matters that they had raised in their review in November of 2019. Uh, pressure on the bank's solvency uh, due to the environmental factors, the low earnings and modest capital cushion that the bank has. Um, although the bank obviously was uh, previously stable because you could fund it, it was highly rated. Um, we were operating in a very volatile market, uh, as you have seen recently. Um, the fiscal challenges around the South African government and its uh, it's being selective uh, in terms of funding state enterprises um, and the prolonged appointment of the CEO was raised as a, as a concern by Moody's. Those were the factors uh, fundamentally that led to that downgrade. Then um, we started experiencing some liquidity uh, challenges as the bank. Um, some of the investors started to reduce their exposure to the bank and uh, some facilities that we had, uh, you know, uh, were frozen and the bank was not able to access those, those facilities. And I must say at this point, Chair, you know, it becomes critical to understand that uh, when we participate in this market and, and we borrow monies on a short-term basis, we then take the very same money and we own lend it to the farming community. That money lasts longer there. It, it, it goes on a long-term uh, uh, service to the farmer. And generally, the farming uh, uh, sector works on cycles. There is a winter uh, uh, harvest and there is a summer harvest. So the nature of it is that farmers would prefer to have rolling facilities and they would come back uh, and, and utilize those funds. So the funds uh, never really get settled and they go back to, to lender. They are generally recycled into that particular system. So the bank cannot run away from borrowing money in order to pay other uh, creditors. And as long as you are well rated and as long as you are able to service your loans, you're fine. But once you are in a situation where you are 
um, uh, your, your rating has been reduced to the extent that we are, uh, lenders become uncomfortable to advance monies uh, to, to, to the bank in that state. And, and that, has con that has largely contributed to our liquidity situation. Even though we had the bank guarantee of 5.7 billion, um, we have used about 1.4 of that guarantee already, and uh, it is still available. However, once the covenants have been breached, like I had shared with you in the earlier slides, four of our covenants uh, or our ratios are not performing as they should. Uh, investors tend to be shy about the uh, about investing money, and they question the viability of that particular business. And that are the, those are the fundamentals, you know, um, you know, that have led us to to where we are. The 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 downgrade uh, didn't only stop in January. So at the end of March 2020. We received another downgrade as the bank at the back of the sovereign downgrade. Now, this downgrade um, uh, at a global scale, you know, sent us further into the non-investment grade, and uh, the national scale was reaffirmed. It wasn't uh, impacted at that time. Um, so factors that were uh, highlighted there, obviously, you know, it was the state not being able to support uh, the DFIs in particular. Um, you know, uh, and and it was a week. It was a weak time, or in terms of the state's ability to support uh, state-owned entities. Now we saw uh, further disinvestment as a result of of, of this. Uh, we had liquidity pressures uh, and failed covenants as, as the bank, and um, there was a later uh, or a subsequent default. Um, in terms of uh, the commitments that we have. So this default, uh, maybe before I get to the, the next slide, this default took place in, 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 in April, at the beginning of April. It was a facility that we had, which um, we are expected to clean down or pay back on a quarterly basis. Now, this facility, the bank could not um, uh, afford to, to service back or, or to, to repay it. And once you've repaid this facility, you must wait 14 days before you utilize the, the funds in that facility. We could not service it, and even after 14 days, we could not use it any further. And that was the, 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 the trigger of the default. Obviously, this was long coming, given the situation I have highlighted to you, to the committee. But at that point in time, uh, you know, other maturities were also coming. And uh, those maturities pushed us to the threshold of cross defaults. And we ended up uh, having the cross defaults as we have communicated uh, in the first week. Oh, sorry, in the, on, in the week of the 20th of April. And, and that's really the trigger. That's when um, uh, all of this that you are uh, receiving in the news and in our sense announcements uh, came to light. As a result of that announcement, uh, Chairperson, we then um, experienced a further downgrade by Moody's um, you know, for, for the land bank. The global uh, rating was now further into non-investment, into highly speculative uh, as the rating there. And the national scale, you know, was just two notches above uh, non-investment. It means, you know, if we have to receive a further downgrade from now on, there's a very strong chance that even the national scale rating uh, would go below uh, non-investment grade. And once you are there, um, it becomes extremely difficult to pull out or pull back. Uh, there are extreme interventions that must take place to assist the bank um, in showing a very good credit rating going forward. There's a lot you have to do to convince the market that you are still a bankable client. Um, and at this point in time, uh, the liquidity of the bank had completely uh, 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 deteriorated. Now, some corrective interventions, uh, Chair. Uh, like I said, these, con these conversations uh, started long before where we are. Um, and and uh, recapitalization discussions um, 
have 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 been I, th I think that you know is in the mouth of the the board and and uh, been engaged with national treasury the appointment of the ceo and the cfo were were affirmed this year in february and, and march which is one of the issues that moody's had raised earlier the government guarantee was uh, um, received uh, in in february 2020 in order to assist the bank uh, to to navigate the, the the downgrades and for the for the shareholder to show its support uh, for for the land bank, uh, the downgrades I've already spoken to. Uh, but what was critical at the time, you know, the board then formed a restructuring committee uh, in order to assist management to to respond to the situation that we were facing. Um, we also appointed uh, ENS um, to support us from a legal point of view. And uh, recently we've appointed the uh, corporate finance advisor being uh, RMB. We have also formed our funders into uh, coordinated groupings. There are two uh, main groups and one steering committee. So the first group is the banking group that is uh, uh, led or coordinated by the standard bank group. And then the um, the institutional investor group, both listed and unlisted, is uh, uh, represented by or led by ASISA. Um, those are the two two groups. And then, and because there are still broad um, uh, investor groups on both sides, we then formed a steering committee uh, with representatives from both groups, so that we can uh, engage or coordinate with those uh, groupings and then uh, they'll be able to disseminate the information across all the uh, investor groups. So uh, what we did ask was um, obviously a standstill arrangement. Right now, uh, we are in a de facto standstill. This means that uh, all creditors of the bank, you know, are not uh, being serviced in terms of their interest and capital payments. They are also being asked not to accelerate uh, and run and, uh, and have a run on the bank. Um, this process is aimed to help the bank to, to, to have a bit of a room to find a, a turnaround situation and uh, be able to start servicing these defaults and, and cure the situation that we are currently in. We have also um, announced a, a liquidity facility, an emergency liquidity facility to the tune of 3 billion rands. And this facility is aimed at uh, assisting the bank in managing its uh, uh, pressure points, uh, servicing um, very, very critical disbursements for the bank, uh, restoration of, of funds uh, to third parties, and servicing the interest um, uh, that is due to our funders. If we don't do these things, um, it will be very difficult again for the bank to have its standing and claw back some of these difficulties that we are now experiencing. Uh, part two of this work that we are doing with our uh, corporate finance advisor and our legal team is to do a balance sheet optimization exercise. This exercise will all basically look at the mandate of the bank, look at the size of its balance sheet and try to restructure the, the, the balance sheet to make sure that the bank is able to respond to its mandate accordingly. Uh, it is sized appropriately for the uh, cash that it's able to, to generate and um, hopefully will emerge with a repurposed bank at the end of uh, this exercise. So it's a turnaround plan um, that we will emerge with um, uh, in the next two months. Now, this, this strategic problem that I've just dealt with now uh, talks to a repurposed bank. Engagements with the shareholder, the National Treasury team, you know, have suggested that they want to see a self-sustaining bank that is fit for purpose and responds to the development mandate much more than the 20% that we are doing today. And obviously, we cannot fund that uh, with a net interest margin or the money that we received from repayments uh, adequately. There needs to be uh, 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 an, engage, uh, an injection of money uh, uh, from uh, our shareholder to be able to fund the development mandate. Our responsibility is to define what that looks like, price it appropriately, 
and make sure that uh, you know we are all on the same page about what is the development we want to fund and all that work is 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 underway chair um, and we are starting to to show i'll skip this slide because i've already spoken to it but uh, what i want to show there is uh, at the end of the slide you see 2025 that is the vision 25 we are looking to having and we're talking there about the repurposed bank so Re vision 25 really shows you the two units of the bank uh, being a commercial unit and a development unit a, a commercial unit as we've come to understand it today What was that? Chairperson? We're taking a call, Chairperson. Uh, I can proceed, Chair. I'm almost done. Uh, so in a commercial unit uh, and a development unit, we are working hard at uh, making sure that this mall um, uh, is appropriately fit for purpose for the bank and it will result in, the, in, the, in a, a bank that is able to self-sustain. The development unit obviously will require quite a, 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 a state resource um, in terms of the land that is available to the state and how we can lower the collateral requirements uh, for, for emerging farmers and how we can commercialize them. It will require partnerships with food producers in the country uh, so that we can uh, come in at pre and post finance uh, uh, support. Um, it will require an understanding by Treasury, the board and, and, and the community of farming as a whole, how it's going to function. We will also define the new commercial unit and how it's going to, to look like, how it's going to be funded. And, and the fundamentals are there. We just need to be able to, to redefine and come to an optimal balance sheet. So uh, I've taken a bit of time, Chair, and obviously this has not been socialized a lot uh, with the board and, and, and the National Treasury. So I won't be able to get into a lot of detail right now. But this is only to show you that we are able to come back uh, with a repurposed bank beyond what we are facing. If we don't save the land bank, um, it was said earlier that um, you know the bank is an important institution and it cannot be allowed to fail. It's too important to fail. Uh, but uh, if we do nothing, um, definitely a crisis uh, uh, of multiple proportions for the bank. Uh, people will lose, creditors will lose their monies, and we do not want that. We cannot have a liquidated land bank. Uh, our uh, efforts as incoming management is to turn it around and come back with a bank that is functional, that services society, that services agriculture, that utilizes state resources as far as communal land is concerned and, and activate agriculture within those communities so that youth, women and, and, and African farmers can, can start to, to take their rightful place in, in agriculture. Um, so at this point in time, our appeal is that we get all the support that is needed to make sure that the land bank does survive this uh, turbulent time that we, we are facing. Um, we are at advanced negotiations. They are very sensitive. And um, I would like to just with that conclusion acknowledge the support of the National Treasury and the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Agriculture. They've been engaged with us in trying to, to solve this problem. Um, the, the National Treasury, I'm sure, would like to come in around what their efforts have been in making sure that um, you know they walk the path with us, they avail the necessary guarantees, uh, and what they would like to see the land bank, its management and its board doing uh, in order to gain more support uh, and turn around the bank. Chair, if I can hand over then to, to Tsepiso uh, to close this part of the presentation. Thank this, you. This, this fine, uh, Tsepiso. Hello? 
Thank you, Chair. Um, let me thank the CEO of Land Bank for outlining the challenges that the banks have experienced over the past few weeks. Um, I would also like to thank the Chair. I think as the people who are closer to the business, um, they have done a good job and I won't try and repeat um, some of the things that they have articulated around um, the Land Bank. I will just underscore certain things for, for the committee. Um, and also provide assurance for the committee in relation to uh, the government support for Land Bank. Indeed, National Treasury is tasked with um, in ensuring that uh, there is adequate oversight uh, of state-owned companies, um, and the committee would be aware that there are several other state-owned companies that you know, rank in the red and have been in distress for a while. And the Treasury has continuously come to committees to explain why these entities um, require support and the kind of support that they have also requested from, um, from the National Treasury. And indeed, um, Land Bank was not in the radar of those companies in distress. And the CEO alluded to the fact that even in 2019, they, they had liquidity, they were cash flush, they were able to repay some of the debt and release the guarantees that were baking the debt that was uh, prevailing at the time. And certainly fast track 2019 to February, where Moody's downgrades um, Land Bank. Um, and at, at that point in time, they reached out, indicated that they have liquidity challenges. Um, and from that perspective, they require the support of the treasury at that point in time, uh, Chair and Honourable Members, we were aware of some of the challenges of Land Bank. One, yes, they have applied for recapitalization as they indicated in the past. And as you would know, um, it, it, it's, it's, it's not a pot of unlimited money that is sitting at the Treasury. There are many other um, state objectives that are competing for the same resources. Um, at the same time, you've got departments putting bids, you've got entities putting bids. Um, against the background where expenditure is increasing uh, in a very short period of time, very drastically. Uh, at the same time, you have your revenue coming down, which is the source of the funding of all these uh, obligations of, of the government. Um, at the time, the Land Bank had guarantees that were issued. Um, they had to come back and request for utilization. And understanding the situation, we were not um, you know, too wary to provide the utilization of those guarantees. But we understood the challenge and backing those conditions, which unfortunately from where we operate from oversight perspective, we don't run the bank. Uh, we don't have as many tools to you know, indicate what needs to be done, what should not be done. So these guarantees that were issued were issued with conditions that intends to address certain behavior and achieve certain things. And one of those conditions, uh, honorable members, was that they must be used to um, fund debt that is long term. Because at that point in time, we were aware that 45% of debt that is due in the short term is not sustainable, meaning that any shock that would happen would send Land Bank into the kind of challenge that we are currently experiencing. And that guarantee was then issued with conditions to address challenges that uh, I've outlined. And uh, at that time, we allowed utilization. They used the guarantees as the chair and the CEO have articulated of 1.4 billion. But they could not continue utilizing uh, those guarantees. Funders were also um, not funding at that time. And this is now where the heart of COVID and unraveling of COVID starts unraveling. Uh, you have a situation where financial markets, um, irregard regardless of the very idiosyncratic um, challenges that are experienced by each and every entity, including the sovereign, um, that impact starts sending the financial markets into a bout of uncertainty. Uh, when not everybody understand uh, what is happening. Um, the fund managers who would usually fund auctions even for the state um, are at that point in time also uncertain. And when you're uncertain, what you do is you hold on to the cash because you're not sure when you're going to also need the cash because you are managing cash on behalf of um, clients as well. And your clients would also require that um, you do that. And since the 
initial request for guarantees, we've, we've been working with the land bank. Um, and while they w- could not access the markets at that time as well, they did indicate that they can't. They came back to us, honorable members, and uh, requested recapitalization again around February, March. Um, and they were requesting 5 billion uh, um, recapitalization immediately, uh, followed by 17 billion in, in also to follow shortly after that. And that is the total of 22 billion honorable members against which uh, revenue is, is declining. And at that time, also the budget is not as balancing as it should. And I think when you get a request like that as a shareholder, you don't just sign a check. You want to understand what the challenges are. Um, and at it's that time where we are trying to understand the challenges, unfortunately, um, the rate at which the events were unfolding was so quick that there was no magic wand, even from the National Treasury, uh, to pull a magic wand and uh, resolve the challenge that was uh, before us. Um, The government was expected to respond to COVID in in a very speedy manner to provide the safeguards that would ensure that the vulnerable in the society um, are being looked after. And honorable members, you would know even at this point that you are expecting a new fiscal framework that starts to outline, uh, that the minister will present shortly, that starts to outline how the fiscus and what the condition of the fiscus looks like. And just from a piece of evidence from the information that that has come out, that suggests that what the picture that we are expecting is certainly not a good picture. And it's certainly not just a South African phenomena. Um, It is a phenomena that has impacted uh, countries globally. uh, But depending on, you know, the state um, and the strength of countries, some countries would fare better and some uh, would not. So the developments, uh, honorable members, while they, they are unfortunate, um, they, they were certainly informed by, by various factors. However, I can at this point assure the committee uh, and, the, and, the, and the honorable uh, members that it is not a sign where we are, it is not a sign of lack of commitment uh, from the fiscals or even from the government. Uh, while the, the, the events are unfortunate, they don't even suggest in any way that land bank is unimportant. Um, And that is why Treasury has been actively participating in the process outlined by the chair and the CEO around addressing the liquidity challenge of land bank, around dealing with curing of defaults, but most importantly, ensuring the long-term sustainability um, of the land bank and therefore safeguarding food security and ensuring that the land bank continues to play the important role that they play in the agriculture sector. And certainly the, the path that we have traveled with them since the this um, crisis unfolded, um, they can also themselves attest to, to the support um, that we have provided and that we will continue to provide. And we will await the work of the, of the corporate advisor that has been uh, uh, appointed by Land Bank to inform the optimal capital structure for the land bank. Uh, You can't have an organization that is growing beyond what its balance sheet can afford. And if it has to be, even if it's small and it is is able to make impact, um, the finance would inform that it has to operate then within scope of the resources um, that are available. And I think going forward and not just now, the resources for government and many governments across the globe are getting squeezed and squeezed and squeezed, and nobody has an understanding whether the emergence out of COVID, whether we are going to see a V-shaped recovery, i.e. we have a short-term shock that translates into growth picking up immediately, or is it an L-shaped recovery that comes and follows where uh, we are able to be impacted and come out, but still operating at, at low levels. So it is it is certainly an, an uncertain uh, territory. We have appealed honourable members to, um, you know, lenders to continue uh, supporting state-owned companies, especially in an environment where everyone is impacted. You know, to the extent that they can, you know, leave the facilities open uh, for these state-owned companies to continue to fund, that reduces the burden on the state um, during this difficult time. 
But in the same vein, honorable members, we have appealed to the entities to also do certain things within their businesses because they are running those businesses to ensure that they are able to go through this very difficult time, preserve their cash, run their entities as efficient as, as possible um, so that also they do not come back and put a lot of strain on the fiscus, which is already in a very precarious situation. So having appealed, we continue to appeal and we continue to work this with entities to make sure that um, while the shareholder is committed, the resources of the shareholder might not reflect um, that commitment um, given what is expected of a shareholder. And in some instances, the National Treasury, where they are not a shareholder, but they still have a responsibility um, to provide assistance where it is uh, required. Um, honorable members and the chairman, I will stop at this point and will take questions um, accordingly. Um, I'm aware of the time that we have utilized and I would like to thank you. Thank, thank you, uh, 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 Tsepiso. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll then uh, um, uh, thank, thank you, CEO. Uh, thank you, Chair uh, of, 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 of the board. Um, let, let me start by um, just checking who has now joined. I know Honorable Kaiser has joined, who was not there. The, I think we'll explain that there are some technical problems. And uh, Honorable Peters has joined. Uh, Saru Pen, you are there. Um, uh, Honorable Joseph, you are there. Uh, Matafa, you are there. Honorable Mlenzan is just, just uh, uh, will, 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 be jo will be joining us. Honorable Tlangwin is having a connection connection problem. Uh, oh, oh, well, welcome, Honorable Mlenzan. Um, right before I I I, I allow um, before I take I take uh, questions and comments uh, from honourable members, um, <clears throat> honourable Peters, just just in a minute because I I, I just stopped you when uh, because I think you 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 wanted to share with us your frustration when you were trying to get in and it's, I think the same applies with uh, 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 honourable guys. I think it's fair. Just just a minute. And that, so that you can know what uh, uh, you know, there are teething problems with uh, um, uh, with this uh, forum that we are using. Honorable Honorable uh, Peters, Peters, are you still there? Are you still there? Okay. Uh, again, con connection, connection, connection problems. Uh, Honorable Kaiso. We are in now, hey? Yes, I'm in, uh, uh, Honorable Chairperson. I think there was a problem in this morning that yeah. we one saw a notice that says the meeting has been cancelled. Mm -hmm. uh, but as I was struggling to connect, I I got the one that says, no, there, there is a link which I could not find. And I've uh, been struggling for over 30 minutes, but ultimately got the link uh, that joins me with the meeting. I don't know what was the cause of that. I'm re it, it really boggles my, down my mind, but that was the struggle that I let me arrive very late to the meeting, and uh, my apology. Yeah. No, I, 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 I think we should also apologize from ourselves. Uh, uh, I don't know what exac exactly happened. Uh, we, we need to look into, in, in, into that. Uh, Honorable Peter said the same, same problem. All members, can I have indications uh, um, about people who would like to uh, make uh, comments? Um, just, just, just call out your name at least. One, not too many. I'll, I'll be able to. Matafa. Honorable Matafa. Pleasure. On, Honorable Joseph. Honorable Dehali. Honorable Dehali. Peters. Honorable Peters. Honorable Sanguini. Honorable Sanguini, welcome. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> um, Kaiso. Honorable Kaiso. Chair, Honorable Sarapen, please. Honorable Sarupen. 
any other name? Okay, honorable members, let's 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 do that. I'll be, I'll be more generous today. We are, we are dealing with a very important matter, uh, land issue. It's a land issue. So I'll give you one more minute in my in my in my usual three minutes uh, maximum. Um, you are not you are not obliged to take all your four minutes, eh? Honorable Matafa. Thank you very much, Chair. Good morning to all the members. Chair, let me uh, first start by welcoming the presentation and also commend the bank on the efforts that they are taking to stabilize the ship, uh, particularly when it comes to the issue of uh, the staffing process, because it is one of the issues that uh, Moody's has raised. And uh, that is where I would like to start, Chair just to, to find out in terms of the concerns that Moody's has raised, is the new arrangement able to respond to such uh, issues? And the first one is on the issue of uh, non-performing loans, which are currently sitting at 17.9%. I'm interested to know, Chair, what is the acceptable percentage for the bank that on their total loan book, they can have as non-performing loans? And the second one, Chair, is to find out what is the reason for the increase. Could it be that our screening process is not tight enough, or could there be other factors that are external in the bank's operation that maybe we need to take into cognizance? And what is the bank uh, doing in order to address these particular issues? Chair, still on the issue of the concerns by Moody's, the CEO correctly refers to inadequacy of the capital buffer. Um, and uh, Moody's raises that the bank is sitting only at 1.4% above what the law requires. Now, it, uh, for me, it would be interesting to know what is the bank's response in terms of uh, ensuring that there is sufficient adequacy of uh, capital in terms of the buffer that is required by the law, but equally by the operational requirements of the bank. And, and this one Chair, speaks to one of the historic missions of uh, government, uh, particularly the democratic government, in terms of improving the lives of the previously marginalized. I'm interested to know, out of the 45 billion rands loan book, how much of this has been extended to blacks, the youth, and women-owned agricultural enterprises? And equally, what is the view of the bank in terms of new entrants, given the challenges that they are facing? Because my view is that, in the main, new entrants will be Africans in particular who have not had access into the agricultural sector. And uh, I'm interested to know how is the bank uh, going to respond to new applications. Um, the last one, Chair, is on the cost to income ratio. Because we see that there is a challenge there and uh, the CEO raised two issues, which is the uh, wage bill and the financing costs that are actually uh, making that situation to remain hostile. What is the bank planning to do in response to these particular challenges in order to improve their cost to income ratio? For now, I'll pause the chair. Thank you very much for the opportunity to engage, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Matafa. Uh, can I ask the honorable members to, to mute the, uh, their microphones? Uh, there's a feedback that you are getting. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Jonas. Th thank you, uh, Chairperson. Uh, and thank you for the uh, presentation. Uh, can I proceed, Chair? I, I just want to say that, uh, Chairperson, you said the land bank is uh, important uh, to fail. I think the land bank is failures. The land bank has become a failure like many other state entities. Uh, uh, and it is, if I listen to this question, the intention comes to 
to to support the national treasury. Uh, they failed the farmers. They failed the small scale farmers. The land bank failed the foundations of transformation in our democracy to help our country going forward um, and and do the redress. The land bank is a fundamental instrument to to bring about change, a better life for all, uh, including uh, food security and and to our new farmers. So I'm disappointed, and I need to. That's why I'm saying, the chairperson, that they failed to repay the loans. They failed to control the payroll, the internal cost. It is a history of that. Uh, that is of concern, but. I think it's almost similar to ESCOM, we said it's too important. Uh, of course, we have to complete that the land bank must play uh, to take the country forward in what we have to achieve in in, in, in our democratic goals. So I'm disappointed that I need to say that. Um, I need to be upfront. To ask uh, my question is, uh, what is the time frame for this consultation? I know the um, the chair said that we can't give detail. You can't give detail. What is the time frame? And my concern on going to international investors with COVID-19 and our global economic crisis, I'm concerned that we may not get the help there. Uh, uh, that what is the time frame that they set for themselves uh, to obtain support from international investors? I'd like to know what the bank is going to do about this payroll the amount, question of 800 million rand uh, that was raised. Um, what is the turnaround strategy there, and particularly the cost, uh, the internal cost? And then I would like to see um, National Treasury. Honor. That is in, in in the reason why. So, so so I just wanted to make to make sure about that. And my question also the last question is: Is there any cases of corruption in the land bank? And if what what are they what are they doing about it? Um, thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Joseph. And then the Honorable Tehale, Honorable Peters, Honorable Tlangwini, Honorable Kaiso, Honorable Sarupen in that order. You know, in, 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 in case uh, uh, we were disturbed by the connections, just remember that that after Joseph, Honorable Tehale, Honorable Peters, Honorable Tlangwin, Honorable Taiso, Honorable Sarupen. Uh, Honorable uh, Tehale. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson, and good morning to everybody. Let me join my colleagues in thanking the presenters for the presentation. Uh, Chairperson, uh, you said a mouthful when you were opening this meeting that there are some developments uh, in this land bank which are not positive, and that's, that's not what we, we are waiting for. We wanted to hear uh, the positive developments. Unfortunately, this is what is happening. I want to say in their vision, they are saying they, they, they want to, to be the world-class agricultural development. Bank that will end up assisting us to see the growth, but that's not what we are we are seeing. And also the implications that at this point the bank's liquidity position has reached a distress level. I had two questions, uh, Chairperson, with regard to non-performing loans and the time frame. But then now the two honourable members, honourable Matafa. And Honorable Joseph has nicely touched on my, my questions. But just to put an emphasis on the non performing loans, I really want to know what is it that they are doing. We know that uh, uh, many companies that are dealing with these issues of finance and assisting the people, they do have loans, but there are some follow ups that they are always making in order to make sure that uh, those people who took the loans end up taking back what they have requested. And then, as I said, the Honorable Member also touched on the, Honorable Joseph, touched on the issue of 
time frames. They sharply have a turnaround plans, but they are not putting on the, their time frame. Lastly, I want to say uh, in their conclusions and recommendations, they are saying the Ministry of Finance and National Treasury have been in an integral part of the process to support the land bank. Now, my worry is uh, if they are saying they have the Ministry of Finance and National Treasury who will end up assisting them, but since the beginning of this year, we never see the sustainability in this land bank. So are they not pushing us to a situation where we are going to see them just like South African Airways. We've been assisting South African Airways, appropriating money to assist them, but we never saw anything, any positive results. So is the land bank not pushing uh, uh, this department on that situation whereby the South African Airways end up uh, uh, taking them? Chairperson, thank you very much. That's my, my input and my, my, my question. Can you hear me, Chairperson? Can I come? Can I come in, Chairperson? Chairperson? I'm done, Honorable Peters. You may you may come in. I'm done. Thank you very much, Honorable Dukhani. Uh, I think the the land bank uh, presentation we had challenges, like it has been indicated in terms of connecting. But I have read uh, the submission and I've got few questions to ask to the chair as well as the officials of the land bank. Uh, let me start by thanking you for the presentation and also for the indications that uh, you are truly looking at how you can be able to address the challenges that emanate from your, your downgrade. But I have got uh, specific questions to ask. How does the bank intend, probably without support from National Treasury and from government, to survive the downgrade? But also, how are you going to avoid going into this again into the future? Secondly, Chairperson, I would like to know from the, 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 the bank, the Northern Cape and Eastern Cape farmers are experiencing a double whammy because of previously last year and the year before you would remember there was this massive a, a drought that affected these provinces as well as now with COVID-19. Is the bank proposing or looking at um, a relief for the, 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 the farmers who are indebted to, to the bank? And how do the bank see itself being able to support and help these particular farmers? I'm raising this in particular for the Northern Cape. Secondly, or thirdly, how long does it take for the bank to process applications for loans? You know, uh, provinces like the Northern Cape, the Free State and the Eastern Cape, and probably Limpopo, uh, they, the, in Africa, they say, it's like they are Cinderella provinces. It's, it's, it's like areas where they tend to get forgotten by those who are in national offices like the land bank. How long does it take for the bank to process applications? I'm making this a, 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 a statement because there is a black or 70% black owned company here in the Northern Cape that we have seen it has contracts with the Defense Force in the, uh, because they are in the agro processing space, but they've applied to the bank for a loan and they are still waiting since last year. And I think it is important that the bank be able to respond, despite the challenges that the chairperson of the bank uh, uh, have, have indicated. The other thing, it's also the, the bank's uh, 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 transformation agenda. How is the bank dealing with farmers in the, especially African or Blacks, in particular Africans, and also with the conscious bias towards women farmers, as well as the youth. Because 
one would want to see this bank being able to really deliver on our, the aspirations of our forebears when they gathered in Flip Town in 1955 and declared that the land shall be shared amongst those who work it. There are farmers who are actively involved in, 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 in farming, but who, because of lack of access to financing or other uh, support, has not been able to access or been able to do a, 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 or to carry out their passion. The other thing that I wanted to find out is, in your loan book, what percentage is directly for previously disadvantaged uh, 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 communities? In particular, again, I would want to know about the youth and the women. Because if we want to ensure a food security chairperson, members of the portfolio committee would remember the challenge experienced by uh, uh, Kanyile in Melmoth, where he said, government has given us land. And there are many such examples where people have been given land to farm on, but they have been unable to farm on that land, primarily because of lack of access to equipment, but in particular finance, because for them to have those equipment, they need finance. So I would want to know, the bank as the key, Honorable uh, uh, Joseph has, uh, has spoken about this. We believe that in the land redistribution uh, uh, and reform space, the most important institution for, for, for this democratic uh, uh, government is the land bank. And the land bank has proven itself in the previous dispensation by allowing even, for example, the bank buying land for farmers and, and, and loaning or leasing that land to, to, to farmers and farmers making money, almost like just printing money. But in this democratic space, it doesn't seem like the bank has got that passion, that drive, that eagerness, and that interest to be a catalyst, to be an agent for transformation. We believe that, especially with the drive right now, with the amendment of Section 25 of the, 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 the Constitution to allow for land expropriation without compensation, the institution that is directly going to be of importance to implement and to support those who would then have access to this land would be the land, the land bank. So I would believe that Jefferson, the land bank, like you said, is very important for, 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 for this a, a democratic state to be allowed to fail. And the individuals and the leadership of the land bank should actually show themselves to be interested in driving this transformation agenda. Thank you very much for now. It seems you have lost the chairperson. Committee Secretary, it seems you have lost the chairperson. Who was next? It was Honorable Tanguini. Tanguini. Honorable Tanguini is next. Honorable Tanguini. 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 Honorable Tanguini.
And secondly, uh, to that, um, National Treasury must ensure that resources are put into the bank and the appointment of qualified individuals to run a productive cash flow into the bank um, as well. And then I have this two or three questions uh, for the CEO of the land bank. Um, who is the funders? Maybe I may have missed it um, earlier on because I was struggling with connection problems. Um, who is the funders of, of the land bank? Um, and if you can't say it, maybe perhaps here, yeah, uh, maybe you can uh, um, do it in writing. And the non-performing loans, how many um, um, non-performing uh, loans do you have and how much are, is it putting over into uh, actual value in value of money? Um, maybe I may have missed that as well. And then of the non-performing uh, performing loans, how many are black farmers um, or white farmers in the non-performing loans? Uh, thank you, Chair. <coughs> Thank you, uh, Honorable Tanguini. Uh, the chairperson has just shifted the while. Uh, I was on the queue. I, I, I'll take uh, that the responsibility for a while, whilst the chairperson is, is, is not there. Are you in, Chair? I'm, I'm, I'm in. I was temporarily disconnected, but I'm back. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thanks, thanks, Honorable Kaiso. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I think a number of areas have been covered by uh, my colleagues there, but I just have about uh, two issues to raise with the with the land bank uh, and, and, and treasury. <clears throat> I think both the treasury and the land bank have a critical role to play to ensure that now land bank itself plays a a, a radical role in, of transformation uh, in as far as land is concerned. Uh, why I'm saying this is because uh, one has just read uh, that there are challenges in as far as you know assistance to uh, black farming or black farmers. Uh, I want to agree with Honorable uh, Dipur because in the province like Free State, we also experience the same uh, similar problem of challenge of accessibility <clears throat> and support of black farmers, uh, especially during the power of uh, 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 drought. Uh, which has been there for quite uh, some time. So there has been a lot of struggle with regard to that. <clears throat> but I want, my question is, I want to understand from the land bank, how do you position yourself uh, with regard to the, uh, the issue of 20, Section 25 Amendment Act of expropriation without compensation? <clears throat> uh, because it is very central to the uh, radical radicalization of the economy. So we, we can't talk of any radicalization of economy outside the accessibility of land. So how do you position yourself? Have you positioned yourself with regard to these developments? Uh, because one has clearly a very, you know, a, a, a doubtful uh, mind to say uh, you have prepared yourself because uh, the issue of land and economy are very central to, to, to one another. Secondly is uh, the issue of, uh, because there has been a narration of people resigning or leaving the entity, uh, do you have perhaps a retention strategy? Because one would believe that under normal circumstances, it is not normal that people would come to join the entity or the organization or the company this month and after two months they leave the company. Do you perhaps have a retention strategy based on the historical uh, developments in, in the land bank? <clears throat> now, uh, the last question would be, uh, 
Now, how do you uh, intend to, to break the, the, the accessibility of money in the land bank in future? Because I want to believe a number of uh, black farmers do not have an, an easy entry to that, so that uh, there can be an element of transformation, uh, especially in the land bank. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank, thank you, Honorable Thais. Honorable Sarupen? Uh, thank you, Chair. The thing about going last is that you often find you're covered by many other people. So I've just got a couple of questions left. Um, firstly, in terms of, of restructuring the land bank, um, is there any plan to diversify its product offerings so that um, they provide other um, services to farmers so that their income streams are diversified, that they are able to look further down the value chain. On, honorable um, Sarupen, it's, it's yes, your chair. video camera on? Um, chair, my so connection is, my camera is on, but my connection is so poor that it's not connecting. Okay. Sorry okay. about that. Sure. Um, chair, so my second question then is, um, how does the bank intend on attracting downstream value players, giving their, considering how strong their cash flow strength is so that they can service their loans at the bank. Um, and what, what measures are they going to take to, in, to improve governance at the land bank as well to prevent any repeats of what we have seen right now? Thanks. That's everything, Chair. Um, thank, thank you. Oram uh, Lenza, I know you're there. Oram Lenza, Oram Kwankwa. Okay. Thank you. If let 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 me let me come in, um, and uh, let me start by uh, acknowledging and uh, welcoming the presentations, which uh, have been made by both the land bank and and, and national treasurer and national treasury, and I I I think it has uh, sort of uh, enlightened us on a number of things and the things that perhaps we as the committee need, uh, need, uh, needs to follow on. <clears throat> um, just if, if, a, few, a few things. Um, Chairperson, uh, I had, and, and CEO, I think I'm, I must start with this one. Uh, I heard uh, about the, the consultants that you, are, you, you, you have uh, <clears throat> engaged in terms of uh, finding a solution to the problems that are uh, are facing the bank. But one thing which one can't uh, avoid to notice is that all those uh, uh, consultants are white and well-established consultants. Uh, CO, I think going forward, uh, we, we want to take this thing of black and green empowerment and using uh, black professionals, whether they be legal uh, or, or accountants, let's, uh, let's start taking them seriously. I think we need to do that. Uh, your consultants, the both that you are using, and I don't think you can argue that there are no uh, black firms who can do what you are doing. Uh, the land bank is uh, very important, but uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm saying these skills are there. Please just make an effort. Let's not uh, be, be comfortable with uh, 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 using with uh, dealing with the usual suspects. I, going forward, I think a, a, a chairperson CEO would like to get reports on the, and, and the uh, DTG. When institutions come and report to us, we want to see what they are doing with black equity empowerment, both in terms of uh, em, 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 employing the, the services and buying goods and services from this thing. I think we, all, we need uh, always a presentation on that. I just thought, me let, I thought, I thought let, let me start with that one. <clears throat> um, can, can you comment, CEO, about uh, uh, impairments at, uh, at, 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 the, at the land bank and also talk about the write-offs, uh, what, what's happening there. Um, and I think that's related to, as you can see, it also relates to, to the question which was raised by Honorable Nlangwin. So can you talk to the impairments and, uh, and, and the write-offs? Um, the role of, can you share with the committee the role of the intermediaries uh, at, at, at the land bank uh, and why are they important? 
also of the intermediaries that you are you are having are you having any black intermediaries that you are using but please share with the the, the committee the role that the intermediaries play at at, at the bank and perhaps uh, do they add to the cost structure of of of, of the bank <clears throat> and i would also like to know what is the attitude of the emerging uh, farmers uh, like afasa on the use of the intermediaries if you if you you don't mind to comment on on on, on that <clears throat> Uh, we understand that uh, you are about to start some exciting developmental projects. Do you mind sharing those projects uh, with us? And uh, perhaps uh, what is happening, what, what is the implication uh, to those projects of what is happening at the bank? Chairperson, I would like to hear from you what has happened to the blended finance. You remember there was a time when we were talking about blended finance, um, and I remember all committees were talking about this thing, but and the bank was going to be very much involved with blended finance. What has happened or what is happening with that? <clears throat> now, let, let me come to the uh, what what it is what the CEO calls the optimization of the balance sheet. I think he's talking about the same thing that uh, uh, the chairperson said is re-engineering of, of the balance sheet. I think the let's let's accept uh, uh, DTG. That is the balance sheet of of the land bank is very weak. Equity of five billion rand, forty five billion rand liabilities. It's a mismatch. So, I I think I want to agree with the the chairperson when he says uh, there is no amount of re-engineering of this balance sheet which will at some stage will say is optimal. What is very clear that there are many uh, players who must uh, uh, <clears throat> do something about this. There's, you can change these numbers upside down and so on and so forth. We'll just be delaying the inevitable. The balance sheet of this bank is, is, is very weak. And uh, I've, I'm on record of having said this, and I'm going to repeat it, that the bank uh, is having an unfunded mandate, this developmental mandate. And uh, I, I am struggling to find out exactly why are we not funding uh, development. Uh, Honourable members have spoken about the the, the land reform, uh, the Section 25 uh, process of, of Parliament and so on, but again there is no uh, congruency with what is happening at, at what we are doing at the bank in terms of, of, of recapitalizing the bank. So I'm just saying, I wanted to say, see, oh, there's no amount of of re-engineering and uh, uh, changing these numbers, you can get all the experts that this balance sheet is very weak and it needs equity in 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 injection. Um, I know one of, of the honorable members asked, uh, who, are the, who are the lenders? Well, I may not know others, but I know for a fact that PIC and IDC are some of your lenders. Now, I just want to check with you, a uh, uh, chairperson, have you ever engaged with PIC and ITC that they become equity holders uh, in the bank as a way of strengthening your your your, <coughs> your balance sheet? Um, PIC and ITC they, they hold shares in a number of companies, but I'm I'm not very sure what stops them, for instance, uh, engaging in uh, holding shares and taking equity, for instance, converting their uh, they are like, uh, they are liabilities. Uh, let me say they are they are loans uh, to to the bank into equity. You know, um, for instance, you know that uh, if I may cite one company, Sasol, both PIC and IDC held equity in Sasol. Uh, about a year ago, the share price of Sasol was about four hundred and seventy rand per share. Today, it's below 90 rand per share. But PIC and IDC have got no problem about holding equities in those private companies. But when it comes to this type of companies, which must help our people, and I say it's so vital, it's, it's, it's always a loan. I just want to see, have you engaged with uh, PIC and, 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 and IDC to try and, and get conversions into equity? 
Or why was it this not thought even before that to say uh, <clears throat> they, they should hold equity here? They're both state institutions. Uh, because the money is that we have, we have lost in common is like uh, Sasol. When they got uh, into that adventure, uh, the disastrous 200 billion rand Lake Charles chemical project in the U.S., so much of uh, of money from both IDC and, 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 and PIC went into that. But uh, there wasn't a lot of noise about that. And then I'm saying, here is the, here is the bank, uh, if you like, is a people's bank. It's a bank which, is, which must change the lives of our people. Why don't we talk with them and see whether they can invest in, 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 in the bank so that the bank can play its, uh, its, its role? By the way, this bank, uh, 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 both uh, Chaperson and, and CEO, I thought, I thought we were going to talk to that, that historically this bank has played a developmental role uh, in, uh, in, in creating African air farmers. With this type of, of, of structure where you go to the, to the market and you raise money and you, you put a lot, some uh, profit on the margin on that uh, uh, interest, and then you say you are going to, to, to pass that to the emerging farmer. We'll forever be talking about this thing of uh, uh, <clears throat> the bank not being able to, to fund black farmers. So I'm, I'm just saying all those things in terms of optimization of your balance sheet. And uh, uh, I, I think on, on this one, as, 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 as the committee, I think we must be very strong on that one, that uh, the, the bank should play its, its, its developmental mandate. But again, it can't just be an unfunded mandate, and we would like to see as you deal with your, your budget and supplementary budget that that's being taken care of. Because the land reform process that we were talking about, if that doesn't happen, it will remain a pipe dream. I think let 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 me stop at that, uh, honourable members, and and allow uh, the team to respond. I'm not very sure whether uh, honourable Nkwankwa is is back, or honourable uh, Lenzana is back. When they are in, I'll allow them to to come in and 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 put their uh, <clears throat> and put their questions and make their comments. Uh, over to you, uh, Honourable Chair, uh, C C C O, uh, and uh, D D G. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Chairperson. I'll, I'll I'll answer some few questions and allow the the team also uh, to do with some of the more substantive issues that require detailed responses. Um, before I proceed, Chair, I want to welcome the to acknowledge the the presence of our chairperson of our credit and investment committee, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Dumamta, who has who has joined us on the line. Chairperson, let, let me try just to be brief, and and so that um, the CEO and those who are operational, including the CFO, can provide you with the uh, the necessary response. Uh, my purpose is just to try to uh, bring some historical context and also some perspective that might be lost in the in the process, given that um, my CEO and CFO uh, have just joined this bank uh, at the beginning of this year. The, the, let's, the, let me start with your questions, Chairperson. Let me start with the last question on the unfunded mandate. We have appeared before this committee, and um, I, I, you are quite familiar with the challenges around it, both as a former minister, a former deputy minister of finance and former deputy minister of agriculture, we have made this point quite clear to honourable members that to expect that the development farmers be um, financed from money that will be raised from capital markets would just put this prepared business to be in a position where they are highly leveraged and they will be unable to service the debt. In an ideal world, you want a huge portion of the money that's being advanced to emerging farmers to be in a, in a form of a grant and just a small portion of that to be um, in the form of debt. And that brings me back to the issue of blended finance. The intention of blended finance was to try to de-risk these um, projects that have been, uh, uh, the, the funding that's being advanced to emerging farmers. And I'll ask Sidney Soundy because she, he was quite, closely involved, our executive on, on, on a, a strategy and communication, who has a, a quite uh, involved on the blend finance to provide some of the details uh, because it had its own teething problems. The program was temporarily halted to try to clear up certain things, and, and I don't want to um, um, go into that space and then end up communicating things that are 
are not uh, are not appropriate. Chairperson, you mentioned the issue of the involvement IDC, uh, PIC, and the possibility of opening up the space for private share private uh, uh, sh sh shareholders into the bank. And 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 in this instance, uh, you, the issue of um, uh, the state-owned DFIs like the, the PIC, PIC and the Minister of Finance has been very clear on this position, uh, and I'll, I'll I'll moderate the language and and not be too strong as 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 he has communicated to me. His position is that uh, we need to really revisit this um, the model of the land bank being 100% owned by the state, given some of the fiscal pressures that the state is experiencing. That it's important that we open up the space to other players who can then invest in the land bank. So, and I, I'll just leave it there. Maybe um, uh, Tepiso can take it further, but I just want to echo the the sentiment that was expressed by the Minister of Finance to myself as the chairman, that uh, it's important that going forward, um, we need to revisit this, this issue of the land bank being 100% owned by the state. Uh, Chair, on the on the issue of uh, of um, your, the question that you have asked about uh, the use of white consultants, I need to indicate that we have got a panel of um, of um, of legal practitioners on our on our on our system. We don't go on tender. We invite them to be part of the panel. And since I joined the bank, we have had black advocates and black attorneys that we have used. Uh, and we continue to use on our business, you know, in other areas of our business, uh, further detail can be provided. In this instance, it was <clears throat> um, deemed to be appropriate to involve the ENS and RN Merchant Bank and experts as experts in the field to try us to uh, help us restructure our balance sheet. I just want to confirm to both to. Uh, members of parliament that indeed we utilize um, uh, services of black firms um, on 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 our, on our in our organization. The the other issue, chair, before and I hand over to the team and not hawk in space. I, the issue and and I don't want to go and talk much about NPOs, but I want to talk principles here. NPOs in a business will always will always be there. They are bound to happen particularly in the agricultural sector, where you are faced with challenges of hail and drought and diseases. Those NPRs will be there. The question is, how do you manage them um, as they appear, and how do you minimize their impact on your balance sheet? Um, and the, the part of the NPRs that we have experienced was as a, a major portion of it, was as a result of Chair, drought. Chair, Chairperson of, of Land Bank, NPLs don't speak oh, acronyms. Sorry, non-performing loans, Jefferson. Yeah. My yeah, cool. Non-performing loans. Where's the consequence of the drought that occurred, mainly in the northwest and free state? And and you find that a lot of grain farmers, uh, because of low rainfall, are impacted by that development. And um, it, 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 those those type of um, uh, um, Transactions will then be referred to our legal team, our workout, workout and restructuring, and then and use even panels on our on our the on our uh, leg, uh, on our legal panel. I mean, use uh, attorneys on our legal panels to go and collect the money. But I'll leave it to the team uh, to provide a lot of uh, the detail on that. The the issue that I want to emphasize is that NPOs, non-performing loans, would always be part of, uh, of of our business model. The issue is how to, how do we manage that? The issue of our turnaround strategy, which has been que a question that has been posed by the Honourable Joseph, um, we are the first to acknowledge that the land bank, in some in some respect, has been very inefficient in these turnaround times. The chairperson of the credit investment committee is on the line. We met with our provincial managers to try to get to the bottom of these issues. And we establish certain, um, uh, we observe certain certain practices, and we said we need to change our credit policies. We need to modernize our IT system, and we need to ensure that there are too, not too many touch points in the system, so that we need to be able to respond 
to the applicants quite speedily. That that has been a problem within the land bank, and we can't run away from acknowledging that. So, the lastly, before I hand over to, to the team, it's um, the issue of whether we'll be sustainable uh, uh, without the support of the National Treasury. Yes, we can try to re-engineer, uh, as I've indicated, re-engineer the balance sheet, which would require that at one stage, we might have to scale down on our operations so that the gearing ratio uh, is br brought back to, to its, its uh, a, a normal position. And I need to come to the defense of the National Treasury here. National Treasury, as part of the guarantee conditions that they advanced us to us in 2015, to the best of my recollection, indicated to us that we need to bring down our our gearing ratio that is too high given the uh, the weak equity that we hold i mean the, the minimal equity that you hold in the business and we um we deliberated on it you know and, and to come to the defense of nature we deliberated on it and one of the options was to stay to sell our assets so that we can try to bring this gearing ratio down and we and the way and we could we were just faced with serious implications which I don't want to go into. But indeed, National Treasury did uh, indicate to us, even on our cost to income ratio, in one of the condi conditions of the guarantee, they made it very clear to us that we need to reduce our cost to income ratio. And it's a it's a it's a matter that we have to revisit because none of us would want to retain our staff, but we need to find creative ways of reducing that that cost and as, as, as we indicated a, a huge portion of our cost is salaries so we need to find a way of moderating that um, and and finding a way that those who are closer to retirement maybe exit them without a disadvantaging disadvantaging their pension payouts it's those are the areas that would um, require the assistance of uh, rmb to navigate lastly chair on the issue of corruption the land bank, we run a very tight ship. Um, you know, if there are any uh, corporate governance lapses, the board does not hesitate to take this direction and have people get fired. So we, we, we pride ourselves on maintaining the highest ethical standards within the organization. And that's the feedback that our em employees pro gave to the board of the land bank that we are proud of this this board because this board does not hesitate to discipline any person, whether it's a CEO or any executive, we don't shy away from taking action. So we run a very tight and clean ship. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Let me hand over to the team, but I'll also ask Sydney to come in on the on the blended finance and provide some detail on what, um, what, what transpired on blended finance. And uh, uh, let me hand over to the rest of the team to proceed with the with the responses. Thank you, Chairman. Um, thanks for the opportunity and to 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 be able to answer the questions of the committee. Um, I just wanted to to let on your, your your responses, Chair, as you had started with the last set of questions, um, just in order of, of how we're going to respond. So the, the CFO will deal with uh, the issues uh, pertaining to non-performing uh, non loans, uh, the write-offs, um, uh, all those questions around there. We've got a, a great presentation on those, and the CFO will do with them. And as you indicated, for historical matters and issues of blended finance, uh, uh, Sydney will will come on. But uh, Chair, we we've also we also agree that uh, insofar as the issues of consultants, we've um, I think you've you've dealt with that. Um, but we we have had the the sentiments of the committee on that one. In terms of the role of intermediaries, I think uh, it's fair to say that. Uh, we, the, the, the chair usually says there are no holy cows um, um, in this discussion. So things are under review. We are looking at the cost implications of the running model, how, how the bank is actually benefiting from these uh, processes or not. Uh, and as part of our liability solution, the restructuring or the optimization uh, solution, we should be able to answer um, how we're going to deal with our model, whether it be direct or indirect lending. 
there are obviously some duplications. We do have provincial networks. We do have an office, uh, a, 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 a head office. Uh, and we do also have intermediaries who do some of the work that the bank is doing. So we'll look at those duplications and uh, respond in due time uh, when we have uh, information. I have had the opportunity to engage with the farmer associations, uh, uh, not just the Pasa, but uh, the, the, the other ones as well. And uh, this matter has been raised around intermediaries and how our black farmers have not uh, benefited from the structure. Uh, I think equally uh, the response is that we, this matter is under review and we're just requesting time to have a full and a comprehensive response to to that particular issue. Um, in terms of uh, the, the PIC and the IDC, I think the chairman has dealt with, with those issues. And around the exciting developments, you know, in particular around development, um, and I've shared this with the chairman and, and, and some board members, that my, my thoughts were that uh, maybe the land bank is the banker of the land. We have this land in our balance sheet. Because if we had it, whether it's pre or post the land reform program, we are able to address the collateral issue. We are able to corporatize this land and bring food producers on board with the black farmers and actually support them in making sure that they are pro productive in the economy. So we have been engaging with the Department of Agriculture. They have indicated that you know there is a process around the land that is available and that land is due to, to participate in the land reform exercise. So we don't want to disrupt that process, but whether it's pre the land reform or the post that project, that land still needs to be commercialized and the land bank remains a key player in ensuring that um, you know, the African farmer is able to participate with lower collateral expectations. And I think that the land bank has got the appetite for, for that particular exercise. We have, um, insofar as there, there has been projects in the past um, around women and youth and, and contributions to, to that space, and Sydney will talk to the particular numbers. But um, at the beginning of March, we did um, uh, commence with a developmental project that is aimed at 180 projects um, throughout the country basically looking at 20 projects, uh, agricultural projects um, uh, for each province, the nine provinces. This project was looking at the value chain. You know, How do we integrate farmers into a value chain system and make sure that um, they are able to enjoy the economies of a value chain? Because uh, um, we all know that an agri-product at a primary level, you know, uh, it can only sell for so much. But once you process it, and send it to the end market, uh, the economies are largely you know, uh, beneficial to, to, to the people who take it from that point onwards. So how do we integrate the farmer and make sure that the ownership goes beyond just primary ag agriculture, but we are able to talk about agro-processing and we are able to fund it successfully. So those are the projects that we, you know, we have uh, launched with our team and they are looking into them and trying to to make sure that uh, um, you know every farmer is on board, and I've already engaged the the African farmer associations about those projects or the development around that space. So we're quite excited about it, and we are hoping that uh, post COVID we'll be able to do our own shows. Um, we don't see the land bank uh, as a hospital, uh, you know, where farmers must come. I think our approach now is to take the land bank to the farming community go to those rural communities and corporatize the land and make sure that they participate in the economy. Um, around uh, um, capital buffers, like I said, I mean, the balance sheet on its own, you know, it's money borrowed short term and money on land uh, on a longer term basis. It's not sufficient and I think the chair has adequately dealt with it. The five billion around our equity investment will not be adequate to carry um, you know, the bank going forward. So, and I've already alluded that the money that is sitting in the farming community uh, tends to, to, to be recycled in that space as opposed to terming out and coming back. So it does require, um, you know, the bank to keep borrowing to, to, to stay afloat. 
a bank that is poorly rated from its credit point of view um, will not last in that model. So we are remodeling, we are repricing to make sure that uh, the land bank uh, responds or emerges with a better balance sheet. Uh, obviously, the chair has stated that uh, without any injection, um, you know, it remains a pipe, a pipe dream, uh, uh, Honorable Mataf. Um, there were questions that were raised by Honorable Joseph. Uh, thank you again for, for the questions as well. Um, we note the, 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 the disappointment around failed transformation and, and, and failing the, the farmers. I think we, we cannot stand here and defend that position. We can only take the land bank from where it is, uh, reorganize it, get all the necessary stakeholders on board, and move uh, you know, with a mandate that uh, we believe will address the issues uh, that we have raised. So we, 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 we will hold ourselves accountable and will be accountable to you on the new uh, mandate of the land bank and how it's going to, uh, to respond. Our idea here is to bank the full farm. Um, it is to do things that we, you know, any other bank is able to do. Banks uh, must, uh, the land bank must be able to provide transacting capability to its farmers. We must be able to bank on the internet. We must be able to respond uh, within 48 hours to applications. Like anywhere where you'd apply for financing for your vehicle or for any implements, they are able to tell you your response quickly. The land bank must be able to do so. And those are initiatives that we are looking into and trying to make sure uh, that uh, you know our farmers benefit. We've got an insurance division in the bank. We should be able to offer life cover. We should be able to offer crop uh, sub, uh, insurance and structural support to, to, to farms. We should be able to extend our cover to the employees of the farmer, um, you know, so that uh, upon them being deceased, you know, their families are, are, are looked after uh, from a life cover point of view. So there's quite a lot that we can do, and we are looking into that space to make sure that uh, we we respond appropriately. In terms of time frames, the the liquidity solution that uh, I spoke about of a three billion. Is going to is a two week exercise that we are engaged in with our lenders. We are we are in the process of submitting the necessary information to them. In respect to the longer term, the the the, the liability solution, as we refer to it, the optimization of our balance sheet, a repurposed. A lot of work has gone into repurposing. Um, we are now uh, looking at the financial model and the pricing model must follow that. And then within a period of uh, six weeks, as we intend on doing, um, you know, we should be able to emerge with a product. Uh, but obviously, there's quite a lot of uh, background work that has to go into that thinking so that we are able to, to, to respond appropriately. Yeah, I think there's been other comparisons with other state institutions and I, I think um, we understand the way that sentiment would come from uh, but you know we feel that the land bank uh, you know is quite critical um, the issue is around the mismatch that we experience the land bank um, repaid its facilities released guarantees previously it was cash flushed and it, it paid back its commitments it was praised for being a bank that is, uh, you know, uh, was able to return those guarantees successfully to the state. So um, we remain proud that, you know, we can still um, revisit that space and, and share in that glory. And that's our, our intention to, to do. So we wouldn't want to, you know, the state to throw, um, you know, the baby with the bathwater in this instance. It's a critical organization and with the right support, and the right framework, it should be able to, to, to deliver what it needs to deliver. Then there were questions around uh, relief, pro uh, uh, relief uh, uh, programs that we've got. Uh, we had a drought relief problem. Um, we were also offered, um, you know, a hundred million rent by the Department of Agriculture for COVID. Um, you know, we are working with the department on those applications should our clients uh, require that support. So although the application remains um, open, um, you know, the money that was uh, 
uh, made available by the Department of Agriculture remains av available for those relief. So any applications, uh, you know, are, are welcome to come through to the bank. What, what I might just warn is that because of the space that we are in, we have had to temporarily close uh, in terms of new applications to the bank. Not those who are already in the system and are facing uh, challenges. Obviously, those can come. But in terms of new applications, until we are certain of where the bank is going and has got enough liquidity to service agriculture like we intend to, um, you know, we've kept that space a little bit closed uh, till we, we are able to emerge out of it. And we agree, obviously, that the bank is a catalyst for, for transformation, and I've already alluded. The 180 projects that we are specifically targeting have a women youth uh, focus. Uh, they are looking into the value chain of agriculture as opposed to just pure uh, primary agriculture. Um, and we challenge ourselves, you know, to, 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 to have those with, with or without collateral so that we can also um, blend the money, um, you know, and lower the fence for, for, for our African farmers to come in. Um, we will also do our best to, to, to lower, um, you know, the bureaucracy around the applications where there is and make sure that the bank is able to respond with speed. Whether it's an approval or a decline, um, we should be able to, to give you an answer. So what, are, what we're going to be setting up now is service standards. Um, that, uh, you know, uh, clients must uh, understand and our staff must understand. And it cannot be that an application goes for 12 or 6 months uh, um, or beyond. So those, uh, those processes are being looked into and we should be able to respond in due course. And I, I think, Chair, I've covered most of, uh, of uh, those questions that were asked. If I can just give Kentani an opportunity to come in around the NPLs, the write-offs, um, you know, why are we here, uh, and so on. Thank you, Chair. Kinsani? Thank you, CEO. Um, and good morning, honorable members. Um, so talking specifically to um, the, the NPLs, um, the CEO mentioned in his presentation that the bank is currently sitting with um, 5 billion of, of NPLs. The, the reason for the NPLs is actually uh, multifold. Uh, so, sorry, that's the non-performing loans. Um, the reason is multifold um, and it talks to um, the, the issues uh, that the CEO also raised in his um, uh, presentation. And uh, some of them are the climatic conditions. Um, the land bank is concentrated, um, as we all know, in agriculture. And any challenges that the sector experiences have a direct impact on, on the land bank. Uh, so things like drought that have been experienced across the different provinces, um, the diseases, uh, as mentioned in the CEO presentation, um, and then uh, have, have had a huge impact on, on, on the book. Um, and there was uh, one intermediary where because of drought um, and the farmers not being able to repay the loans, they kept recycling the loans. Um, and uh, to that effect, um, the land bank has stepped in and taken over management of, of, of that loan book. Um, so in terms of how the land bank manages the, the non-performing loans, there is a team in the bank that looks at the book um, entirely, the loan book entirely, uh, to make sure that at any point in time we have an understanding of where our book is sitting, what is the risk that sits in the book, um, and be able to uh, proactively um, have a view of uh, what is likely uh, to move uh, through the different stages of, of, of performance. So there's a team that looks at the book um, before um, there's a default. And then once the customers default, then it moves into, into a legal space. Um, I think I also need to emphasize that uh, given our mandate, uh, we don't just run to 
liquidating our clients. We work with them um, thoroughly to try and uh, remediate um, until it becomes um, uh, 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 evident that uh, we know we will not be able to remediate a particular customer. That's when we would take the legal steps. Um, so I think from that perspective, we 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 also it also takes us longer to work out uh, the clients because our priority is to try and 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 cure uh, before we get to 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 a stage of 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 liquidating. Uh, so 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 and 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 that process runs throughout. We have a team that sits um, both in head office and in the regions, um, which are located at different. Um, provinces that interact with clients directly around uh, uh, not only origination and support, but also around collections as well. And, and that process runs well. Um, so if you look at our, our, our non-performing loans currently, they are largely concentrated around uh, the, the, the intermediary that I, I, I mentioned. Um, and then obviously our development book also carries a significant portion of the of the, of the non-performing loans. Um, in terms of the, the the impairments, so the way the the uh, the land book uh, the, the land bank um, uh, writes its 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 loans is mostly secured by 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 property, and that can be movable and immovable. As a result. The, the, the loans are highly collateralized. So they've got a high level of security. And, 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 and because of that, we don't carry as the land bank a lot of, 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 of impairments um, because if it reaches a stage where we need to write off, we'll first try to recover uh, the, the outstanding balance from the, from, the, from the customer. So our impairments are, are really not, um, not very high. Um, and I think I think that's basically that. Unless if there are follow-up questions on the on the non-performing loans and the impairments. Thanks, 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 Kinsani. Um, yeah, yeah, the CFO is it not so? Uh, yes, I am chair. Yeah, so when, when you answer us, we would like you to talk about numbers. Don't talk about significant, not significant. Should be a percentage of this and so on and so forth. Agreed? All right, Chair. If, no. for, future, for future references. Eh? No, Chair. So, so that you can see in future when you come back to us, uh, have you deteriorated or have you improved? No, okay. Chair. But, but thank, thank, you, thank you very much. Um, uh, I'm sure. Uh, did you say, Peter?